Welcome to Binary Jazz, where we've got it. This is a podcast about stuff, things, and articles therein. Uh, I'm here as I am every week, just about, with uh, Mr. Binary Gary, who's Gary in real life, Allison Plus, who's Allison in real life, and I am Chris in real life and jazz sequence on the internet, and we are Binary Jazz. You can find us online at binaryjazz.us or at Binary Jazz on Twitter, where you can send us uh, comments, harassment, or gift cards. Gift cards. Uh, yeah, this is a show where, where Gary and I don't know what we're talking about, which is pretty much all the time, always, and uh, sometimes we have a topic uh, that is brought to us, and we have to figure out what we think that topic is. Um, it almost would be more fun, or more interesting, or maybe less interesting, uh, if if we had to, like, just conjure up, like, we didn't know what the topic was, and then we, like, invented the topic, and then we had to talk about what the topic was without talking about the topic, or I don't know what I'm, yeah. I, I'm realizing, uh, as you carry on here, that, uh -huh. you know, like, the topic, that question that comes up in interviews, like, uh, what do you do when faced with a problem you don't know how to solve? And I should just respond with, oh, you should listen to my podcast. <laughs> okay. Like, I yeah. totally first, first I find the origin of the word, and then I break it. Down. I break it into its logical pieces. <laughs> I do have a topic for today. There is. I don't topic. say I'm like pleased as punch with it, but mm. that's okay. They don't mm. all need to be like knocking out of the park winners. Like no, that's that's absolutely true. That this is a conversation in our household currently is. They don't have to be home runs. Yeah. Anything, everything in life. I mean, we had schlock last week, so. True. Was that last week? I don't uh, know. It was, oh, we it was were several in, yeah. weeks ago. It's the last episode. Last episode. It was published last week. Yes. Right. <laughs> so it's last week for the listener. Right. And the listener is all that matters. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so the topic this week is anthropic. Anthropic. Gary's already mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I just, it, you say words that I feel like I should know the definition to and like, dang. Yeah. Don't you might have heard it. You might have yeah. heard it in use as, hey, do you believe in the anthropic principle? <laughs> I have not actually heard that. <laughs> um, just as an example. That's but uh, to well, be honest, we got, we got the anthropic principle. I was going to bring the anthropic principle as the topic. And then I was like, I don't know if I can explain this. <laughs> Wait, wait. This is above my pay grade. <laughs> Do you believe in the anthropic principle? Uh, that is going into Where our... do you fall on it on the anthropic <laughs> Where principle? Do you fall on the anthropic Are you more strong? Are you weak? <laughs> <laughs> um choose for choose it? carefully because this could really be a life game changer. <laughs> I'm not sure I was ready for this kind of commitment today, honestly, when I said yes. <laughs> the question I, was, are you feeling up to this? And I said yes, but I didn't I, know that this is what I needed to feel up to. I, asked, it's Monday. I asked twice, Gary. <laughs> it's like it's like like Monday, like light rain outside. I, I I'm changing my answer. I'm not up to this topic. <laughs> so you would say that you are uh, weak on the anthropic uh, scale. Just in general. Just in general, I'm weak. Yeah. Yes. I hear that. It goes back to the like, they don't all have to be home runs. Sometimes you're just doing the best you can. <laughs> well, and I have brought my presence today. I am here. Entropy. I'm not going any further than that. Derives from entropy, which is like chaos and randomness. No, it doesn't. That's spelled, that's spelled with an E. Yeah. Oh, this is. 
This is A N T H R O P I C. Yeah, anthropic. this is clearly related to insects because they're anthropomorphic. Oh, right? anthrop anthropic. All right, that doesn't <laughs> I help. feel like Chris is like having glimmers of like, oh yeah. I mean, I mean <sighs> <laughs> of course, well, anthropic. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it all the different ways now anthropic it's <laughs> it is a social media site for anthropologists <laughs> An anthropic where where you where you go and you do your uh, anthropological study uh in other cultures and you share your 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 pictures and research papers anthropic mostly selfies yeah so it's, it's instagram instagram for anthropologists is how it's advertised is it owned mm -hmm. by meta no thank no. god it's owned by MIT. <laughs> no, M <laughs> MIT probably has a horrible anthropology department. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. Probably not. But that, I, that's probably not what they specialize in. It's I certainly mean, it's not, not. But I wouldn't imagine they have a terrible. Yeah. Slow on uh, funding. <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, how, that's true. How is. How good is MIT's anthropology? Well, department. they're not doing anything that helps the war machine. So uh, MIT anthropology. Uh, well, there is a they have a graduate program. Yeah. Uh, I can always tell how my life is going by how much I'm Googling going back to school. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like if I'm looking into going back into like formal education things aren't yeah. going great <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very i wish you hadn't said that okay Why? so so an Gosh. mit's anthropology department uh mit's uh bachelor degree in anthropology is ranked 421 for most popular bachelor degree college bachelor degree colleges for anthropology i mean top 500 and, is pretty impressive to me and it's ranked 436 for most focused bachelor degree colleges for anthropology but out of what i don't know <laughs> if it's out of like 450 of yeah, not 50, great 500 <laughs> is it out of 500 uh, no i don't know uh, uh, i gender, mean I, I feel like anytime you're in the top 500 in that the, in the, that whatever that site is it's pretty wait good. a second <laughs> <laughs> All of the one students who graduated with a bachelor's degree in anthropology from MIT in 2020 were women. All one. All of the one. <laughs> wow, rough uh, year, I guess. God, that's, that's the majority. I was going to suggest also that's a very hard, like, like we're setting out a demographic survey for the department. Like, um, the majority well, of the bachelor degree graduates for this not major. Anonymous, is it? Are black or African Americans about one hundred about one hundred percent of grads fell into this category? Don't you love uh, software automation without thinking through edge cases like this? It's fucking amazing. <laughs> Here we are, y'all. Writing code, changing the world. I hate everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. In twenty twenty, there was only one person who graduated from the anthropology department at, M at MIT. So there you go. One of the um, one of the people I'm companioning for hospice was just like, how do you at the end of my session with her, she was like, how do you do this and not hate everything? And I was like, I was like, what, what do I say? That, I was like, do I option? say, oh, I hate everything? <laughs> <laughs> it's an option to not hate everything. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I don't understand. Like I'm supposed to be like supportive and like yeah, right. a present active listener i was like i don't know how to answer this so i basically just said that but um i i i would have probably been like super philosophical and like i can't love anything unless i hate everything that's a great way of dodging that question mm -hmm. i know it's total bullshit too well, it's hard, right? Because like you're dealing, like in this case, I'm dealing with someone who's like going through like really complicated grief. And I'm yeah. like, 
like in the scheme of things, like where I'm at and where they're at is like, they're, they're very different places. So me being yeah. like, I hate everything like, right. is not helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's legit too. But I'm like, my hate everything is like stemming from a different plate, a seed, different seed than where she's coming from. I'm like, I'm like, oh, we, we both arrived at the same place. <laughs> and you don't want to be like, I actually do this so that I uh, retain some sense of perspective that some people have it way worse than me, <laughs> right? Because that would be like a super bad interaction. I that think. is not the right answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That might be your last day. That's that's the anthropic principle right there is yeah. is gi giving the wrong answer that is actually factually correct. <laughs> Wait, I don't think that's the case at all. <laughs> you don't think that's the anthropic priest principle? No, I don't. I just defending Allison. I don't think that's the. I don't think that she's using dying people. No, yeah, I I, I agree. That is not. <laughs> if I'm gonna cut to like the, the very raw. <laughs> bottom explanation thank you for the how benefit I understand of the, the doubt. world yeah <laughs> you're welcome that's it's quite literally the least i could do in this call i feel uh <laughs> it's like anti. look i'm not saying allison is a people person but she's not an anti-people person so like let's be it's like the thing is is like i can walk the walk of a people person mm. Like I can communicate with people. <laughs> I just yeah. like, do I want to? Like so many of them are just rotten. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's it's I mean it's true. It's present true. company excluded. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Excuse me, I forgot the mute. It's all right. We'll cut it in post. Sure. Sure we will. We'll cut yep. it in the we'll cut it in the anthropic. No. And anthropic is a uh, you cut with? it's like a biopic but it's about an anthropological study um it's an anthropic like a docu pick a biopic yeah. i was gonna anthropic. tell you all something that was really fascinating oh i remember what it was um saturday i was ready to be like outside a little bit um and i um uh, it turns out that our tiny little city here was having uh, an electric car show. I'm like, well, I got to go see that, right? Like car show, not my people. Put the word electric in front. I'm like, yeah, that's my jam. Definitely my people. <laughs> it was not an electric car show. It was like 25 Teslas parked next to each other. <laughs> well, I mean, it not... showed. So, it I mean, was it a was a show of electric but, cars. It, yeah. it fit the definition of electric There was car one show. that someone had put like, lift in so they got there and they parked and they dropped it like a low rider which is kind of cool there was one that was like a really shiny paint job a couple that had like a matte like wrap on it otherwise they were all stock and it was it was it was fun it was quirky what was i mean it was just show off your ev mm -hmm. yep. cool yeah just it like been, it would have been nice well, if there was more coverage of other uh electric cars and, and i think that potentially there will be in the future i think this is yeah. just like uh, how do who do we get in touch with and how do we know and it's a small city so it was like well here's let your friends know and it yeah, just right. was like He's, self selection every, and everybody that's how it everybody that was there owns a yeah. tesla because that's exactly what everybody has but there are other evs and yeah i would be interested in seeing those um i agree ours. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. And I think maybe, you know, next time it'll be maybe a little bit bigger next year. We'll see. But like a nice little quirky thing that happened. And yeah. Got you out of the house. <laughs> yes. There is one, uh, there is one EV company that I found a while ago because I don't know, they must have, I think they got in touch with Nathan Fillion. Um, and he was, liked them a lot because they looked like the inside of a spaceship or something um so he was like big on them but they were like a super tiny little and and they made super tiny cars like they're like three wheel like things oh, okay. yeah with like the engine in the front um well obviously that's not normal that's not weird 
um <laughs> I was like I don't know if that's <laughs> I don't know what you're driving. But this, but, uh, I, th I think I think the steering was in the back, though. I think that was the weird thing because it had it was three wheels. So it has two wheels in front and one in the back. And I think the the rear wheel is the one that was doing the steering, um, as I recall. And I can't remember what they're called. Archie Moto. Archie Moto. Is that right? That's that a great name. Right. That sounds right. <laughs> if so, that's a great name. Archie Moto. Uh, Archie Moto. Ultra efficient electric vehicles. Yes, that is the one. They still exist, and they look like what I thought they did. Yeah, so they kind of look like a. Uh, they kind of look like a, uh, um, uh, you know, a, an an HUV. No, a the off road vehicles that are not street legal, uh, at least not in the state of Utah. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm like I'm clearly not the audience. I'm like it's, I, it's, I, I think I think it's referred to as an. HUV, like a yeah ATV. Yeah, but it's not an ATV anymore because it's it's yeah they they changed what the is it a UTV U UTV U <laughs> UHF. <laughs> now we're just saying like anyway initials. it looks it looks like that sort of except it only has three wheels or alternately it looks like a three wheeled motorcycle. Right. Yeah, depending cool. on the model that you get. Ugh. And they have one. That would be fun the, to drive around. They have one called the Deliverator, which has to be a <laughs> reference to uh, to Snow Crash. Here's the thing, I looking at that, it looks like a lot of fun, but also I don't want to be on the road in that thing. I know how right, people drive. Right. Yeah. For like real. that seems like a good way to die. I mean, maybe not a good way. It seems like an effective way. I mean, it looks like. It also looks like if you slam on the brakes, you're like going to start rolling. It forward. looks highly it's specialized. Over. Yeah, it looks highly specialized. They have they have an FUV, which is a fun utility vehicle, uh, which oh, is basically which vehicle. basically just looks like an off road thing. Yeah, uh, and then there's like basically a bike, and then mm -hmm. there's a delivery truck, and then there is a rapid responder, uh, which is I guess for emergency services, and then there is the motorcycle thing. Um, and then there's one that has a flatbed on the back, but like, that's probably like, if you work on a farm or something, like, I don't know that you would use that on the street. So most of these, I don't think that you would actually use on the street really, mm -hmm. except just like show off. Yeah. But you should see pickup trucks here with these huge off-road tires that are definitely being oh, used yeah, on for the sure. road. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, 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 yeah. I don't get that at all. I, I, uh. I'm I'm so baffled. I'm so confused. Yeah, you should uh, spend a month in Utah. <laughs> I I venture it's probably pretty similar. Yeah. To North Carolina. I mean, there are more Subaru Outbacks per capita in uh, the Salt Lake City and Park City area than probably anywhere else in the United States. That's at least kind of cool. Like Subaru Outbacks are not bad. Outbacks I was thinking are, more yeah. like. But, you but know, like a like nineteen nineties Ford pickup truck, everything tires else, as tall as I am. Everything like, else is an F four fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that's what. What's the topic again? Anthropology. Anthrop anthropic. 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 That's what anthropic is. <laughs> I I do feel like I know what this is, and as soon as Allison says, I'm gonna be like, damn it, and. <laughs> In fact, I'm 100% certain that's the case today. I just don't know what it is right now. It's an anthropod... Anthropod... Picture service. <laughs> and... No, it's not. <laughs> the next million dollar business idea. <laughs> this is why we are not the, uh, the brains people of our companies. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the next big thing i know oh i've got an idea for you social media for anthropologists insect <laughs> Date, selfies. dating services for anthropologists what would that be called uh anthro meat meat what meat, the hell meat, man meat, meat cute <laughs> meat cute <laughs> <sighs>
Meat cute is also the name of the uh Meat Cute. Meat cute is also the name of the uh uh charcuterie uh, meat place. Charcuterie. In, in charcuterie, yeah, deli place at uh uh in iZombie. <laughs> it's called Meat Cute because they make um, meat. Rhonda is making a curry for dinner. It smells Sounds so good. good. That's it. That was so that's the update. My mouth is watering. Yeah, send it over. Happily. Yep. Uh, it's definitely vegetarian. I don't know if it's vegan. I, I mean, I might, I might cheat for curry. Good to know. <laughs> it, it depends. It depends. It depends. Depends on how sorry I will be later. Um, I would think that it probably is. I just would want to look at ingredients and confirm. Yeah. I can't imagine that there's anything in there that's not. But also... What um, kind of curry did, is it? Like an Indian curry or a uh, yeah, Thai Indian. curry? Okay. Indian curry, yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, oh, I was gonna say cornbread. I didn't know that I had to look for vegan cornbread mix. Yeah. Because Jiffy has lard. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I felt badly about time. that. It's been a long time since we've made cornbread. We have a cornbread recipe, but I haven't. We haven't had it in a long time. I, I mean, the nice thing about like the Jiffy mix that. is like, oh, look, here's a nice bread I can add to dinner with like no effort, you know, for the cast iron skillet in the oven, get it hot, pull it out, mix, pour, boom, back in there. And it, then just like occasionally make sure it hasn't burned yet. And then cut it. So that's the thing I do or did. Did for the curry? No, or just did, in general. Did in general. Just yeah. in general. When I when I would when I make dinner on Sundays, that was a thing I would go to. And, uh, they do have a. Yeah, it, it, it's it it's. As a vegan, you learn to read the boxes very carefully because most of the boxes say contains some ingredient that mm. is not the thing that you want. Yeah. Yep. See that? Yeah. It's depressing. There's there's fewer of those and sometimes and now that there's more like options, it's more common that there will there will be like, you know, big bold advertising on the front that this thing is plant based or whatever. Um but, but now too, like because paleo is a thing and paleo isn't isn't analogous with uh vegan but there are crossovers there's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that's like like cauliflower pizza crust with pepperoni on it or something <laughs> you know like so like it so like there's a lot of things that that are like keto friendly um and some things that are keto friendly are vegan but other things that are are not are very not <laughs> yeah i i had potato salad this week potato uh, and it, it had black olives that word? in it. Potato, yeah. Black olives. But not like, like diced, like entire olive. Like, I'm like nope. what the heck is that? Nope. I mean, I, it was fine. It was, nope. um, not fine. The brininess was a really interesting flavor to add to potato salad. Potato. Potato. I, like uh, I, I mean, potato salad. I would the possibly what? be okay with the with the brininess, but not the olives. German potato salad. Have you had it? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. The local grocery store here, Publix, usually has at least four kinds of potato salad available. Potato. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm in the mood for that bright yellow potato salad. Not usually. The eggy potato salad. Yeah, and I guess there's mustard in. It. Is that what makes it bright yellow? Oh, yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah. Or maybe it's just like aged. I don't know. I don't Sometimes know. if you're at a barbecue and you see that, you're just like, look, I, I don't, I didn't buy five pounds of this. I can just have a scoop and move on with my day. Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is they do like, like they do like reasonable portion size too. 
Mm, Which is, I think that's unheard of when it comes to potato salad. I feel like you normally have to commit to like, I guess, reading potato salad for the next three weeks. (laughs) They do this thing where you go and you get, I I think, I think it's like 10 bucks. You get uh, fried chicken or rotisserie chicken, like from the deli. And then there's two sides that come with it. So like potato salad and um, pasta salad, maybe, or coleslaw or uh, baked beans, obviously with bacon and something else. Um, And then you get a four pack of King's Hawaiian rolls and it's like 10 bucks. So that was like a nice, not nice. That was like a crap. I don't want to make dinner when the kids were young. And like, we could do that and be like, oh, it was a, they do like a mac and cheese as a Mm -hmm. side too. So here's some mac and cheese and we could get potato salad and fried chicken and King's Hawaiian rolls and that was a, a meal for a quick meal. Now I want now I want chickpea salad. You're gonna have to I'm gonna have to do that for lunch. Gosh, red like the red potatoes make such a like a like a nice those are, that, I think that's my favorite option from Publix. Publix where shopping is a pleasure. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you. No. Yeah, sadly. No. Publix um, needs to give us money if they want us to advertise for them. Yeah. yeah so I was going to tell you lots of, th- not so, lots of tidbits about Publix. First and foremost, uh, family owned business out of Lakeland, Florida. Uh, current heiress to the Publix's fortune is a big red hat. So to hell with them. <laughs> um, but the, the company um, is very um, uh, liberal with stock options for employees, like hmm. all employees, like hourly uh, so they 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 have a great employee retention rate, uh, and also in this area, I would say uh, easily uh, of all the grocery stores, um, the uh, the most diverse workforce. So interesting. Yeah, yep. It's all like they and and generally, I mean, you don't you don't see a lot of turnover, which at a grocery store is like the closest grocery store to me is Food Lion, which is Food Lion. Yes. Oh, do you not do you not know the, of the food line? Oh, no, yes, is, food this line. Is new information. Oh wow, it's is uh, that like Snoop South- Lion? It is like a it's a southeastern I guess chain. Um, they uh, are smaller generally than um, you know like a full service grocery store, um, and they are um, super no frills. And if you go, you know, like around rush hour there's probably like three or four employees working there and cannot handle the rush. like it's it's just <laughs> like it's whatever like like they're optimized it's like it's uh it's the cvs of say it's the Walmart. no it's not even as nice as cvs is the problem <laughs> it's it's a step down from cvs but yeah i mean it's that same approach like put them everywhere staff it poorly <laughs> you no know, it's yeah it's and like the food quality is it's very clearly like a rung down whereas Publix is not a premium grocery store but much higher quality so when I go grocery shopping I'm I'm, just, I'm going to Publix to, it's a further uh, drive but I don't go anywhere who cares we go to uh, we go to natural grocers for most of the stuff we go to natural grocers and Costco is where we go grocery shopping um, farmers market is like a big thing for us too but it's not. I mean, recently we didn't want to schlep out there, so grocery always, delivery was what we what, hit. What I always notice about uh, natural grocers uh, workforce, more so than like Sprouts, uh, and probably not so much as as Whole Foods, but I don't know. I haven't been inside of a Whole Foods in a while. Uh, is that there's a lot of non-binary folks uh, who mm. who tend to to work at natural grocers, but we don't have a lot of like you know ethnic diversity in Utah big shock so uh that's perhaps uh do, far for the course but uh, do you have the trader joe's you have trader joe's right? yeah we moved further away from trader joe's but yes there is a trader joe's um so yeah. that was actually our our old natural grocers was the best because it was almost always completely empty and it had the biggest uh like selection of stuff uh and they closed that because that's actually the store that i no i never worked in that store did i no, I didn't work in that store. Um, it used to be a wild oats 
and then it was a Whole Foods. But the problem is that there's a Sprouts like two blocks away mm -hmm. across the street is Trader Joe's and down the block uh, is a Smith's and then a, a block past that is uh, where the Whole Foods moved to. So natural grocers took off after whole the new Whole Foods opened, but then they have like these five different things and <laughs> like three direct competitors, three direct competitors within like a three block radius. So wow. yeah, they didn't do so great, I guess. Which is a shame because we really like shopping there. Like it was, we always wondered though how they were possibly making money and if it was just like you know do we do they just take the loss because of location. Um, because yeah, there's always there's always like maybe one or two other customers in there, which was great for us who don't want to deal with people. Yeah. yeah. And that's the entropic principle, avoiding people at all costs. I miss Trader Joe's. Mm. Oh yeah, there, it's yeah. not in Canada, and there's the person that was like smuggling. Trader yeah, well, into Canada. yeah, there used to be a Trader somethings. Yeah, wasn't there? Yeah. Trader flows or something. Think, I think he got shut down. Yeah. Well, definitely because probably because of COVID, COVID as well, but. Mm. What a weird ass world. So yeah. what is Anthropic? Anthropic is. And where mm -hmm. are you on the Anthropic scale? <laughs> anthropic is of or relating to human beings or their period of existence on earth. Okay. Well, that makes sense because it has the same base as anthropology, which is the study of, of human beings and people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, an anthropic principle, which I was like, oh, that'll be the, that'll be a better topic. But I was just like, this is, it gets really in the weeds, but like weak anthropic principle is basically the conditions that we observe in the universe must allow the observer to exist. So basically like, like the things that we observe have to be so otherwise we wouldn't be able to observe them it's a very like yeah the things that we observe have to be observable otherwise we wouldn't be able to observe them <laughs> like it sounds i know i'm like i sound like an insane person um, okay but that's like, that's weak anthropic principle that's weak yeah and so I, strong anthropic principle is the things don't see. have to be observable Strong is that the fundamental parameters that the universe depends admits the creation of observers within it at some stage. So basically it, it includes the must rather than it just happened. I guess. I, again, I'll send you the Wikipedia link and we can all laugh about how over this, <laughs> how over my head this is. Um, because there's also, there's like 30 different levels of the principle, like depending no. on your belief. So there's like a chart and diagrams. And I was like, oh, this is Ooh. a lot. Um, is there a self-test? <laughs> <laughs> like, where do I fall on this range? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So there you go. fascinating so like the earth has to be as old as it is because otherwise we wouldn't have evolved to the point of knowing how old the earth is okay yeah and that if it is... was any younger we wouldn't be able to observe it and therefore it wouldn't be that old so this i maybe it aligns with this other um uh crazy thought i've been having um in relation to space and the rotation of earth around the sun and the moon's rotation around the earth and like where we are both in a solar system of course this all stems from like james webb space telescope oh wait we need to give that an alternate name there's no i don't know what the alternate name is someone on twitter brought that up whatever it is the new space telescope and this this idea that like we're in this perfect spot for, for exactly that, like the development of not just human life, but human life long enough to have like some kind of like, uh, like transgenerational, like awareness and passing on of like self-reflection. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's actually like insanely amazing that, that we exist 
at all enough to uh, understand through spoken word, like ideas and emotions and feelings and and uh, it, it's just it's it's uh, it's crushingly beautiful and horrifying at the same time. That uh, there is a branch. I should take a deep breath after that. There is a particular branch of. I, I've talked about uh, Aaron's grandfather who worked on the um, the bombs that that on the detonator or detonator uh, for the bombs that that dropped on Japan during World War II, and he, I can't remember the name for it, but he believed in a particular variety of christianity that is basically that idea that god of course god exists because science tells us that the impossibility of Mm. our existence is so astronomically unlikely that there has to be some sort of divine push to have made it happen but but okay i'll 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 sit with that and i'm totally cool with that but how do you bridge – how did he bridge the gap from that to saying that Christianity was clearly that – like the, uh, yeah, the logical right, inclusion of right, that, that yeah. religious understanding? Yeah, that's 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 a bit fuzzy for me as well, but that is the sort of the premise of – yeah, right. So like, yeah, you, you have that you have that, that fundamental idea, and then it's like, so now let's frame all of these stories with that as a context. Like, well, that doesn't – I don't know that that makes Yeah, there's really a middle step a there sense. Like, that's been glossed over. Yeah, like it's just yeah. like well, we we don't look too closely at that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but he would debate, uh, not with me because I would never have that debate. But he would debate, uh, for you know, by all accounts, uh, you know, hours about, uh, philosophy and theory and, and stuff. Uh, um, because like, that was what he did because he was a scientist. <laughs> the thing for me is, it's like there is that I don't even know what you call that that branch of study, but there is that branch of study where people are like, well, it's amazing because if the earth were a hundred miles further out in its, its rotation around the sun, like we wouldn't be able to survive. Like maybe, or maybe that would just be like the normal range of temperature that we're used to. And that right. coolness, coolness yeah, we would, would have be evolved okay. to the point where it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Though you couldn't go a lot further or a lot closer. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the part. That's, you know, you just don't know. I guess we'll find out soon enough as the whole damn place catches fire. And Yep. Uh, we did get an email, but it wasn't a great one. Uh, but it says, hello, I saw that you mentioned Pro Writing Aid on your page here. Episode we, we, so we mentioned what? ProWritingAid.com on episode. I, I when did we, I haven't, why I haven't did we fact, do that? I haven't fact checked it. Uh, on episode. Yeah, that sounds uh, like a load. One zero zero one zero zero one one thought terminating cliches. Oh, uh, that is a favorite of mine. And uh, they I'm, I'm say, that seriously, the thought terminating cliches. Let me see if I can copy that and see if we did actually. I just don't remember talking about pro writing aids. So, no. Whatever you say. Not that one. Let's Maybe see. a different one. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.